So using QLab, you can run backing tracks and video all synced together beautifully all at the same time and it's wonderful. I'm gonna be using my iPad here as the little display so you can see the video and hear the backing track at the same time, just in case you are wondering why that's there. But normally this would be for like, if you're playing at a theater and they've got a big projector or an LED screen or something like that, something visual, this is what this is for. If you'd like the videos that I've made and are using in this video, 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 I've said video 4,000 times, but if you'd like, any of the stuff that I've made for this video, you can click the link in the description. And if you're one of my patrons, then it will be posted on the Patreon page ready for you as this video goes live. The best bit about this whole process is completely free. So you can do this along with me now for no extra cost, which is perfect. So with that, the first thing you'll want to do is sort out your backing tracks. Now, what I've done for this to keep it as cheap as possible, which is free, is I've just created a left and right pan click track, so the click track is panned to the left, the backing tracks are panned to the right. If you'd like to see how I put click tracks to it and how I did it, then you can check out the video just up there. But just to skip over those few steps, I'm gonna presume you have a backing track ready and good to go. Same with the videos, but like I said, if you don't have them ready and you do want them, you can click the link in the description to download them. So when you've got your backing tracks and your videos, then you'll want to download QLab. And to do that, super easy, just Google the words QLab, the letter Q and lab, and then it's the first one here. So we can just click on the QLab website. This pops up, we just hit download and then we're using QLab 5.3.2 and we just wanna hit download latest version. Job done, that's it. Once it's finished downloading, then you wanna open it. I know, crazy, but you'll get this screen. This is the starting screen. And what we're gonna do is open a new workspace. A new workspace then looks like this. It's very uneventful and very unexciting, but welcome to uh, welcome to QLab. The first thing I'm gonna do straight away is just open up what's called the Q list. And the Q list is basically a list of what's happening next. To do that, I'm just gonna go to the bottom right here and click this. And that's mostly so I have these four buttons here, which is stop, play, go next and pause. It's just nice to have them there just in case. And now quite simply, we want to import all the things that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna put the backing track first to make sure I've got audio going to the places I want it to go. There it is, I just dragged and drop, super simple. I'm gonna hit play by hitting space bar or the very satisfying go button at the top. One, two, three, four. Cool. To stop that, I just hit the escape key or like we brought up the queue list, you can press any of those buttons up there. That's working for me, but if it's not for you or you want it to go somewhere else, then just go to the bottom right, there's the settings cog. That'll bring up the settings menu and you want to just go into audio and where it says patch one, the system output external headphones is what I'm currently using for this, but you'll want to click on that and choose whichever option is for you. Once you've done that, hit done, click play again on the track and hopefully that should, uh, should work. So now we want to import the rest of it. Again, just dragging and dropping. So what I'm gonna have is I've got a, uh, a real fancy space video because it's like an 80s thing and I thought it was appropriate. Uh, it's just a royalty free thing that I found on the internet. I'd presume you'd have something that you've made or your band have made. Um, if not, then royalty free stuff is the way to go. But I've got a little video, it's 20 seconds long, and then I want it to go into the logo, which in this case, I'm gonna use Drum Electric's logo because this is the Drum Electric YouTube channel. So I'm just gonna highlight them both and import them by dragging and dropping, and there we go. So if I hit go now on the logo, it's taking up my full screen and it's probably similar to you. So if you're like me and you've got a separate monitor with you, in this case, for me, it's the iPad just here, as you can see, or you're on the gig and you've connected to the projector or the screen or whatever, then you'll want to click on the first video item, come down here and click on IO, so in and out, and the video output, as you can see, it's coming to my, my screen just in front of me, but I want to change that by going to edit, the little drop down here, and for me, it's sidecar, because this is an iPad and that's how I'm doing this, but, if you've plugged into an HDMI into the projector, then that'll appear here. Just hit done. And now when I hit go, we can see the Drum Electric logo as planned, which is wonderful. You'll want to just check that the video has worked as well. So I'm just gonna hit go on the video and it's great. And that's why we choose the top one. Usually you can do it with any, but for the most part, it changes the same settings for everything, which is what we want. So now we want to order it. And how I want that to work is that I want to start the show with the Drum Electric logo. So I'm just gonna drag in the logo again, but I'm gonna put it at the top. So now when I hit go, the screen changes and that will just loop and stay there forever because it's just a picture, it's a JPEG. Now what I want to happen then is when I hit play on the backing track, I want the, the space thing to happen at the same time. So I'm just gonna drag space twist, as it's called, up underneath the backing track. So we're gonna click on the backing track, we're gonna go down to basics and then down here where it says continue, we're gonna go to auto continue. And what that basically does is that when I click on the backing track and hit go, as you'll see, One, two, they've three, both four. gone at the same time. 
which is pretty great. Now, the last thing I'm going to do, just to be a little bit fancy, and I've kind of gone the long way around this, but we'll carry on, is that I want that video to start after the counting. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the duration here and hit go and see how many seconds it is until the track comes in, basically. This is what I mean. One, two, three, four. Cool, so it's about a second and a half. So what I'm gonna do on the pre-weight option, I'm just gonna put 1.5, and then hopefully when I hit go, this should uh, this should should appear. One, two, three, four. Yeah, perfect. The way around that to make that quicker is to actually import the video into Logic or wherever your backing tracks are, and then just match it up with where the start of the track is, and then re-export that video with that first bit of gap. Then you won't have to worry about any of this. You can just hit play and it'll go exactly where you want it to be. This is just another way of doing it so you can fine tune it. So the next thing, that I want to do is go from that video when it finishes, it's only 20 seconds long, and go back into the Drum Electric logo. So it just sits there on screen forever until I go to the next track. And to do that, again, we're just gonna use the little continue option. So I'm gonna click on the Space Twist video, gonna go down to continue and then auto follow. And what that does is it waits till it gets to the end of the video and then it'll automatically follow to the next one. So with the magic of video editing, so you don't have to sit here for 20 seconds, I'm gonna hit play and then I'm gonna skip forward in the video edit to when it gets to nearly the end of 20 seconds so you can see what happened. So here's play. One, two, three, four. The video's going, I'm gonna skip ahead. All right, we're coming up to 19 seconds, so there we go. Track continues, logo's up and it's gonna stay there until the track is done. So that's now the track, that's the visual at the same time. The last thing we wanna do is go from this logo at the beginning, so then when I start the backing track. One, two, three, four. I don't know how well you can see it on there. But if I pause this, you can just about see the logo behind, and I don't want that. I want the logo to disappear, and then this video to come in. So to do that, I'm actually gonna add a stop. So we're gonna go up here to the little menu, if you will. I'm gonna go to the stop, and then drag that up just underneath the logo because it's just linear. It goes logo, stop logo, backing track. You'll see an X here and that means it's not linked to anything. It's if you hover over it, it will say missing cue target. And that just means it's missing where to go. So at the bottom here, you can see in yellow, no target cue. I'm gonna get the number which in this case is 0.5, and that's gonna be my target because that's the video number 0.5. And as you can see, when I hit enter, it auto fills in the middle so we can see what's happening. And it says stop logo with background. Now what I want to do using the continue button, our favorite button in the world now, is hit auto follow because that means rather than what would happen, which is I hit play like I will now, the logo will go, so people are filing into the, into the venue, you've got your logo up, you're ready to go. Rather than hit stop and then go again, I just want to hit play on the backing track and we're good to go. So now, if I hit go, One, two, three, four. we're in. And that's because I've put auto follow on the continue because it'll automatically follow it. And then I don't have to worry about hitting it twice and waiting too long and all that sort of stuff. Now, what I'd ideally like to do is make that fade out but the fade out option is where we start to pay for QLab. For a little free workaround to get video working with our backing tracks, this is great. You may also find that it will work really, really well and that you use the little part of the money earned from that gig because I believe a day license for QLab is five pounds, I believe. I could be wrong, but that, that's what it was when I used this a couple of months ago and I had to pay for a license. So there you go, that's pretty much it. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comment section down below. If you're one of my patrons, you'll find all of the assets I've used with this video in the Patreon page. I'm Harry, this is John and I hope you have a lot of fun with this because it's uh, pretty, uh, it's pretty great.